Hi guys, Hode Croston for Herdy and Grays and welcome back to uh, the Spring Sportfish Spectacular. Um, you're joining me now, we're next to the river. Um, obviously it's early in the season, we're in very late March, early April. Um, what we're going to try and do is catch a fish, hopefully, uh, on a dry fly. Um, we're next to a beautiful little river in Cumbria. The conditions are, to be frank, pretty good for fishing, although we have had a lot of rain and some cold nights. So that has sort of slowed the fishing down quite a lot. Now, generally, anyway, at this time of year, the fishing is not fast and furious. What we're really doing is looking to pick our chances to catch maybe one or two very nice fish in a full day of fishing. Now, it's all going to be centered normally around lunchtime-ish or early afternoon when we've got some insect activity. Things like large dark olives and March browns are particularly what we're looking for. So what kind of gear do you need? For this kind of fishing for me, I like early season dry fly fishing, a nine foot rod, at the very longest, nine foot nine inches. But anything between that nine and just under 10 foot in length is ideal. Line sizes can be anything really, to be honest, from a, a very, very lightweight two right up to a five weight for bigger rivers. For me, what I'm using is a nine foot two Herdy Ultralight LL for a four line but I've underlined that slightly with a three weight, just so I can generate slightly tighter loops to beat the wind, uh, and also to just give me that little bit higher recovery rate, which personally I like. For the reel, I've got one of the Ultra Clicks, the lightest reel we've ever made. The reason I'm going for such a super lightweight outfit is because I really want to enjoy my fishing. Um, if I'm only making a few casts all day, I want to keep everything nice and as light as possible. Uh, and if I get any, any big fish, it's going to be a real, real good fun to play them on very lightweight equipment. Got a weight forward line on. Personally, I prefer weight forwards, but not everybody does. Personal choice, not a huge amount of difference, really. Uh, and then at the business end, the leader is close to double the length of the rod. So it's a very, very long leader, finishing in about a 0.12 or a 0.14 tippet, dependent on the size of the fish you're chasing. They are quite big in here. Um, but I've still gone with the 0.12 just to give myself a nice presentation and hopefully they, they won't see that leader. So a few of the other things that you need. Um, all of your gear should be in a, in a compact. You don't want to be carrying lots and lots of stuff. It's a very roving, moving around approach. I always like to have these things with me, a set of knee pads. Um, this allows me, protects me waders and lets me crouch down low if I see a fish that I want to cover without spooking it. Obviously you need a landing net, all of the basics, um, but I try and travel as light as possible. And finally, before we start walking up and down the river, what I am going to do, because we're in the early season and we're hoping for a little bit of luck today as well, I'm going to stick my lucky hat on so that if there are any fish, who knows, I might be lucky and catch one. There he is. The first part of the puzzle, which is always a puzzle at this time of year, has come good. Um, we've sort of waited it out. It's about half one now. There's been a few little large dark olives started to, to pop off. The lucky hat sort of done its job so far. Uh, and I've seen three fish rise in reasonably quick succession. So all we're doing now, we're just going to wait for another five or ten minutes, hopefully, just to let them build a little bit in rhythm and get feeding. And then I'm going to try and pick out the one that I want to try and catch. Uh, it's just come up there now. There's quite a few of those olives are just starting to stand on the water. I'm not going to start fishing just yet. I'm going to have to get in and let the water settle for a minute or two. Because I'm going to push a little shock wave. And they don't like that. So there's a, there's a few olives coming now. And the, that lower temperature and the drizzle is preventing them from drying the wings as quickly as they would like. So it's holding the fly on the water and hopefully long enough for the fish to, to take advantage and eat them. So what happened there, Lucky Hat did part of its job. I didn't get managed to get my part of it done. I missed a fish. Wasn't a particularly big fish, to be honest. Um, what I'm doing now, there is still an odd fish rising there, but it's very, very intermittent. I'm a little bit worried that we're gonna lose the fly because the time's ticking on. 
So what I'm going to do now is move upstream a little bit to where I've seen another fish and see whether we can get a crack at him while he's still up on the surface and while we're still in that kind of magic hour around about the middle of the day when the temperature's at its warmest and the flies are around. So I'll have a little look upstream and see if we can get that one. So I've moved up to where I saw the fish earlier. I'll be honest, it's not feeding regularly. I've seen it occasionally. Um, what I am going to do, because I've come into slightly faster water, I'm going to change the fly. So down there in the flat water where I missed the fish, I had quite a low riding fly, something with a very low profile, sitting down well in the surface. Still an upwing olive imitation, but sitting quite deep in the surface film. Um, what I'm going to do, because the water's a little bit faster here and the light is quite bad, I'm going to put something on with a slightly bigger profile that I can see a little bit easier. And it's also going to offer a slightly bigger mouthful for a fish that might be just opportunistically feeding. Um, so I'm going to change the fly and then have a few more casts into this little bit of slightly faster water where there might be a fish. There he is. I've got a good fish on now. Off he goes. Hopefully if there's any more fish we won't spook them. I like to play them by hand until all of the initial excitement's over with and then if I decide to I'll, I'll recover that line. But a lot of time I prefer to play by hand and just manage the fly line as best I can. He's about beat now so I'm going to net him. There we go. The lucky hat did it again. Okay, so I'm going to slip this fish back now. One thing that's really paramount with these fish, these are beautiful wild brown trout, never been stocked. Um, they're really just too precious to catch one, so you have to look after them and take care when you're putting them back. So for me, the way I do it, I get my hand wet and I get it cold. Um, the thermal shock that you give them is not good. I do have to handle it because of where the hook is, but I'm keeping it in the water. And that hook's barbless and it's straight out. So I've really not had to handle that fish at all before I put him back. So that for me, in all honesty, is the, is the pinnacle of early season fly fishing. A lovely, big, sighted, wild, early season brown trout. I am going to ride my luck. I've still got the lucky hat on. So I am going to try now and, and try and squeeze another one out. Might do, might not, but at the end of the day, I've had a nice fish, a good size one. And for this time of the year, when we've got all the challenges with weather, etc., I'm happy. The hatch has really started to die now. And what's happening is the fish, although to be honest, they've never been consistently rising at all today, um, they've gone very sporadic and they're actually starting to roam around looking for the last few flies. So it's become even more unpredictable than it was a little bit earlier. So what I'm going to do, I've got quite a big fly pattern on that's going to draw a lot of attention and I'm just going to spread it around in the likely areas and try and get one of them, hopefully to find it when it's in a, an eating mood. So we're going to throw a few casts in, see if we can get one more fish. Well, there we go. We've had a really nice sort of hour and a half, hour and three quarters worth of action. We've seen a few nice fish. We've missed one nice one and we've caught a very nice one. Um, all in all, to be honest, at this time of the year and these kind of conditions and this type of fishing, that's pretty much what you're looking for. Um, you're not looking for a huge number of fish. You're looking for one or two fish caught in a very nice way, in a very, very challenging situation so you can't really ask for any more i've already taken my lucky hat off so that's what i'm putting down to not catching that last fish that i've just seen um, all in all it's been a really good day and i hope you've enjoyed spending a little bit of time with me on the river for the sport fish spring spectacular if you're interested in any of the gear i've used the hardy rod the hardy reel 
check it out on sportfish.co.uk and thanks a lot for watching.